Hello guys, how are we all? It's Thursday the 23rd of June. How is it the 23rd of June? How has that happened? That's completely alarming. The time is two minutes past one in the afternoon. I'm just sat doing a bit of work, hydrating as we do it. Um, it is my last few days in New York. I leave next week, which I'm really, really, really looking forward to being back in London now. I've been here for a while. I can't remember how many weeks it will have been, but a while. And yeah, I've kind of been feeling the pull back to London for the last couple of weeks, which is nice to know going forward, like when that moment starts to come in. There's lots of trial and error involved in this. Um, and yeah, I feel like I've been noticing a lot of questions online about why I'm here in New York and what I, just basically what prompted this life change. I can really understand how from the outside looking in it feels confusing having like bought a house and you know, even like Luigi who by the way still lives with my mum. They're obsessed with each other. It's sickening. <laughs> um, he's very, 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 very happy. I can't wait to go and see him really soon when I'm back. Um, but yeah, all of those decisions and then this one of spending so much time here. Um, and the, like, the lack of explanation for me has come from A, finding it really difficult to position how much of my own life I want to share online at the moment. There's just something about like approaching 30, being in my late 20s. It's really made me pivot on just how much I want to share. Um, and I think like for a lot of you guys, if you've grown up watching YouTube for, I mean, I've been doing it for like seven years or something now, a bit less, um, that you might have noticed that shift generally with the people that you watched. And I just think you you like you get burned from sharing a lot and then you don't want to do it anymore. It's really that simple. You become really protective over it. Um, and then, you know, in a, in a space where I've grown this wonderful audience that I'm so proud of and I'm so connected to you all. And I feel like I sometimes do a disservice of now explaining what's going on because I honestly don't know how to share things. like. I don't find, I find as well as I get older sometimes the criticism gets under my skin a little bit more um, and I'm reticent to say it's hard because it's not a hard job but it is hard to kind of understand your boundaries within it. And the second reason why I find it really hard to talk about is because there's no big explanation. There is no like, there's no big part of my life um, by which I'm probably indirectly most referencing a relationship that I am keeping from you guys. There, you know, I, I basically just had an itch to not be in London all the time, especially after the pandemic. This idea of splitting my life somewhere was something I had thought about pre-pandemic as well, and often thought that buying a house would kind of conversely really um, facilitate not feeling as tied to London when you're not paying rent and then having to pay rent somewhere else. Like at least it's a mortgage and obviously there's more flexibility around that um, when it's your own property and you know you can't sublet in London, things like that. So I, yeah, that was always on the cards and then there's always a reason not to do something like that. I, I knew I needed to try and go away for a stint, which felt like a huge, Thing, like leaving where you live for like six weeks there's always a reason not to do it there's always something that comes up in London or whatever where you just then like oh I can't go now and so when the renovations were happening that was the perfect time for me to go and do it um, and I loved it I loved it so 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 much I love the city I have an amazing group of friends here I love the lifestyle here I'm just gonna mute that because it's emails going off um, I love the lifestyle here. It really suits how I like living my own life. I I mean, like, it's the best city in the world, in my opinion. It's, it's incredible. And, um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that time there. I really enjoyed knowing that I had London as more of a base and a home, but that I wanted to build that feeling here as well, which is what I've been working towards doing. Um, and there is honestly no other reason than that. And I am so unbelievably privileged, unbelievably so. 
and have a job for now that I, that can allow me to work anywhere and I just want to make the most of that while I can. At some point in my life I'm going to settle down, that, that is something that I want for myself and these years of living like this are going to be the minority as well. So of course I just want to absolutely make the most of them. Um, yes, financially it's very, very extravagant but it's how I want to spend my income. Um, you don't take it with you. <laughs> and like I said, I don't want to not acknowledge how fortunate I am within this as well. It's um, an incredible opportunity to have and I just wanted to make the most of it. Um, and I don't know, live in two cities for however long I enjoy it for and what an amazing thing it's gonna to be to look back on. So I hope that offers as um, some sort of an explanation and, and, I, and I guess the other level of it um, I've been like reflecting a lot on sharing things online I've been reflecting a lot on that for two years probably now um, is that I think I like I don't I don't really know what I do with my life in some ways when I moved to London at 24 like fresh out of a very long-term relationship um, I knew more what, what I was doing with my life then. I think there's something really wonderful about those years in your mid-20s when you, you know, you've, you, you feel like you've just, you, you don't feel a pressure uh, that you should know necessarily at that age. And thankfully I don't feel like a pressure that I should know at 29 and 30 later this year. But I know less of what I think I want for my life than I did at 24, which I really think is okay. I really think maybe actually it's quite common to get to that point in your 20s and feel that way. Um, so sometimes when I'm, you know, reading comments online and the honest answer is like, I don't know. I don't know how long I'm going to do this for. I don't know how long I'm going to enjoy it for. I don't know what it's going to look like in content all the time. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> and it's, you know, it can be a really scary place to be at or a really empowering place to be, depending on how you look at it, depending on your mood day to day. Um, and a really hard question to answer to, I don't really don't have the answer really, <laughs> which I think is okay. Like I, I, I at the moment don't want to live like a settled life essentially. And don't get me wrong, like the week, like I said, I go back to London next week. Um, the week before I go back, or when I'm in London and I know I'm coming back here, I feel unbelievably unsettled and unbelievably uprooted and unbelievably like my head's in London right now and I'm physically here. I wish I could align the two better. And it's that, you know, it could be two weeks out of a month of then when you get back and resettle them at the other end, which is quite a significant amount of time. But I, you know, it's not the easiest feeling, but the good and the like excitement of this completely outweighs that. And I'm literally just living day to day at the moment of, does this feel great? Is it making me happy? Am I feeling fulfilled? Am I, you know, looking after myself, looking after my business, my independence, everything? Then if the answer is yes, then I want to continue doing this uh, because I d right now don't necessarily have a long-term plan, which I truly think is fine. Truly, truly, truly. And again, speaking from extreme privilege here, and I don't want to sound unaware of that at any point, that living between two of the most expensive cities in the world is an extreme lifestyle choice. <laughs> Definitely an extreme lifestyle choice, but um, one that I think then when it's been made without necessarily having this like huge reason to be here can feel really hard to get your head around. But you know, if not, if you can, then why not sometimes? Um, and that is a sliding scale of you know what every individual can do, but there's just that element of actually making really decisions for now, not always thinking about five years down the line, ten years down the line, or whatever. Like we were only going to be in this position once. I think the pandemic really taught us that, having so much taken away from us all. Um, again, aware of my version of living for now is an extremely privileged one as well. Um, I don't want to sound well completely out of touch with reality even though I think this job really does facilitate being out of touch with reality a lot of the time so yeah that was my spiel quite a long spiel I can't actually see how long I've been recording for but at kind of the best I was really aware I needed to offer some kind of an explanation on this and have been really unsure 
on how to because the answer is that I don't know. That's the long and short of it, guys. Um, and I just encourage everyone to take risks, I think, sometimes. Step outside your comfort zone um, and you kind of will be amazed at where you land, I think. So that's the, that's the advice for today. I'm gonna go on, carry on doing some work. Um, and yeah, just document these last few days in this incredible city. Um, but then we will be back in London. No mix. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can pick up today. Is that okay? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Four to six. Okay. See you later. Thanks. Um, I'm trying a few different washing places now. If you're in New York, that's the best one I've been to. It's on East Seventh between. What's it between? Second and I always get mixed up between the ABCs and the one two threes. What order it comes in? Near Bowery, but I think I, I don't think it's between Bowery and Second. Anyway, it's really good. She does the best job, and she's so lovely. And I went there when I first got back when I was first here in October, and then obviously was gone for ages. And then when I started going there again, she was like, "Hi, Lizzie." I was like, oh, "She remembered me." Supermarket here is wild. Totally wild. That's my body, actually. Drinks choices are. Oh, it's like the most overwhelming experience ever. But things are nice. Here we go. Called recess. They're like CBD drinks. And they've got all flavoured. making sure everything is how it was when I arrived. Um, I went to protest last night for the overturning of the Roe versus Wade bill, which is just incomprehensible that that's happened. Um, yeah, really, really just, oh, just, there's no words for it really. I, I can't believe how aggressive that feels. But the protests were great. They started at Washington Square Park and went on to Union Square. There's thousands of people there. So that was an amazing thing to bear witness to. So many people, obviously, completely up in arms about this. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad that I got to spend my last evening here doing, I mean, I'm not glad because I wish that that ruling hadn't happened, but glad that I got to be part of um, some sort of action against it. But yeah, I, it's super hot here today. My flight's at nine in the evening. Um, it's Pride this weekend, so it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare to get to the airport, I should think, because a lot of the roads are gonna be closed for the parade. So I'm leaving ridiculous number of hours before my flight. Um, but yeah, before that, I'm just gonna go meet a friend for a drink at Swift, one of my favorite bars here, um, and then continue to clear my way out of here. Yeah, I always find that once I've made the decision to leave, that um, when I know I'm going, the last few days as I'm leaving just feel great here. So that's my phone beeping. So yeah, now I'm kind of sad to leave, but that's always the way it seems to go. Uh, but I really can't wait to get back to London. I really can't wait. Who's texting me? Oh, good grief. God, God. <laughs> finishing my coffee. We've got a really big parcel to carry and I can't manage it and my coffee. So I'm just sort of drinking this at a bus stop. It feels so good to be back. So, so, so good. Lindsay's staying with me at the moment as well, which is lovely. Um, it was so nice to come home to somebody and like ask to be in the house and everything. 
what I'm picking up is actually a lampshade, so I'll show you that when I get back. You'll also see how big it is for me to carry. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling instantly settled, like I never left. You have this weird sense that so much will change and you get back and really nothing has changed, which is lovely. And just grateful to be in sunny London with my, my coffee in my fave coffee shop. giant box home and now I'm going to open it up. It is a lamp light shade from the same company that the two lamps are that are in the bedroom from, Sandrum Coal. Um, I don't know, I've got quite a lot of like light fittings, there's three, four that need a shade. Um, and I don't know which one this is going to go on yet, but but we shall be making a decision now. Ooh. Okay, it's going to be too big for here. Ooh. I think it's going to be too big generally. dark on this camera and maybe I'll try it in the bedroom okay let's try it in the bedroom as well come on get some energy Elizabeth you can do this I think this is too matchy matchy for me and it's all just too, I know the bedding's cream but it's all just too beige that needs to be something more of a statement and it's also too close to the ceiling rows the drop on that light's not long enough which I could change but for now, I think it's gonna stay in the hallway. Yeah, that looks way too flush to the ceiling there. But generally, I think I just would want something a bit more sort of a statement when for this room, because I wanna keep really minimal, mostly. Decision made, Down back downstairs it goes. Good morning, guys. Excuse the spot my chin that I just squeezed. <clears throat> I'm just waiting for the gardener to arrive. Look how overgrown the garden is. Ooh, right here. Come on, camera, catch up for a minute. Look at that. It's like a jungle. So the gardener's on his way to tidy that up. Um, then he's out. And I am doing washing and working and being a domestic goddess, as is not my destiny. No one will ever be. Um, and yeah, thinking about house stuff really which is so nice it's feeling so lovely to be back like I said oh this tank's from Suzanne by the way I really like it's kind of not my normal vibe because oh I hate that word because it's floral and very cutesy but I really really like it with baggy jeans also really nice neckline on it um, it's got lots of little flowers on it it's a really good one hello guys Lynn and I switched the rooms around this morning it's not quite right and I just am stuck and the reason it's so tricky to work this out is because it's such an old house nothing is straight the camera's just plugged in and it needs 10 more minutes to charge when it's charged I'm going to show you what I mean like these two rooms are different sizes um so it's just so hard to make everything flow I'm really glad I've tried it because I would not have rested till I'd switched this around but I need to break the news to Lindsay that I needed to help me just move it back around, I think. But I do want your guys' input as well, because I'm just a bit stuck with how to make these two rooms work, really. Um, but, yes, glad I tried it. This light's been replaced again. The builder smashed that one by accident. <laughs> Very expensive accident. Came back around yesterday to fix it. He was like, oh, God. Um, but I'm so glad to have both of them back in. It just looks so lovely when they're both there. But 
oh sorry but also they're not in line like everything's just not in line um which i really like because it's kind of characterful but i'm struggling with to make it flow for that reason um can i just have a complaint about what is apple's worst design why do the mouses charge like this you like while it's charging you can't use the damn thing why is it not at the end apple tell me it's driving me mad hello camera's charged up let's go through these rooms so front door is here by the way you walk in here and this was the living room so this view i really like love having the table in here because it's so nice to sit and work there and it'd be light and wonderful i'll move all of that when i decide what i'm actually doing with everything but this feels lovely actually really big fan too crowded Ugh. so like when you walk through here you kind of jam into that first and then you've got to do a careful shimmy around the table to get into the kitchen um but i love actually how the sofa looks in the reading room as it were and it's so nice to sit here and like have the books in front of you or you sat reading and everything if i was doing this permanently i'd move this but this is the hardest piece of furniture to move you take out every drawer so i'm only doing that when i'm committed um yeah it's just not enough space unfortunately in this room and yeah like i was saying nothing's lined up so this room is smaller than that room like the lights aren't in line with one another this the actual like um doorway doesn't line up center to the bay window everything's just a bit skew with um which kind of makes it a bit difficult to plan a room i like in terms of how i use both rooms this makes more sense for the usage use from, from a practical point of view in that it would be so much nicer to work there where it's light i didn't like working in this corner because it's so much darker whereas sitting and reading in this cozy spot is lovely and it's quite nice like I prefer for a living room to feel smaller and cozier rather than a bit more spacious like my whole part flat i loved that so much but that living room was so big it never felt cozy but then it's just this complete lack of space around this table i'm gonna live with it for a few days just because i think Lindsay might not be my friend anymore if i ask her to move it all straight back and see if it if it is manageable but it's just not like that if you walk into that table and it hits your shin fuck me do you know about it so it's just not going to be practical, which is just how I am. Um, oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it. There's just, yeah, no way around it, really. What do you guys think? Anyway, um, I am going to edit this now <laughs> and sit and think about this a bit more. I just don't know what to do about it because this is so lovely to sit here and, like, have all of this in front of you is so nice oh, it's just it's just literally moving through the room it's not enough space and I don't want to change any of the furniture like I could obviously just get a long narrow coffee table I don't need a meter by meter coffee table but I still love that coffee table so much and I just don't want to have to change something so that's sort of a bit of a non-negotiable I want to work make it work with the furniture that I've got and there's actually just no way to do that because everything is just slightly too big. Um, and there isn't even like another room I could put the coffee table in. Like it has to be in here. Thoughts, feelings, very welcome um, from you all. And I'm gonna end this here and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for following along in this disjointed journey, which is me approaching 30. <laughs> oh God, we'll all get there eventually, won't we? And it'll all even out and I'll know what I want to do in my life. Um, but until then, thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one.